don't fall for it. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name is Georgina and I will be making videos about candle making and selling. If that content is of interest to you, I would really appreciate you clicking the subscribe button and liking this video at the end if you did enjoy it. Especially as this is a new YouTube channel, I would really appreciate the help and support. In today's video I will be sharing with you my top 10 tips for if you're starting out as a candle maker and candle business owner. I really hope you find this video interesting and if you have any further questions then please do leave them in the comment section below and I will try my best to get back to you. So tip number one if you are just getting started and you're just thinking about starting a candle business potentially then I would suggest buying a candle making kit and this will allow you to kind of dip your toes in the water and it will take you through the candle making process from start to finish so by the end of it you'll have a much better idea if this is something that you want to pursue or not. Obviously it can be pretty daunting when you're in the research stage and you're looking at different types of wax and different fragrance oils or essential oils as well as all the different kind of wicks you can buy. So this just means that you can give it a go without having to fork out the money for all of those various different supplies which you may end up not actually needing if you decide it's not for you. I'm sorry, this has to be addressed. How, how did this become this? become this, become this, huh? Tip number two is use all of the resources at your disposal when you're first getting started. Obviously there are some great websites out there, if you just do a Google search then you're going to be met with hundreds of different blogs, websites, a lot of the companies selling candle making supplies, they will also have a blog section where they will share tips, advice, tutorials even of how to get started in candle making. Another great resource is Facebook groups. Um, I've been on a number of different Facebook groups and I still find them really interesting and helpful when it comes to looking at new fragrances or if I'm having trouble with a specific fragrance or a specific wick. Even though we're not a new business anymore, there are still things which we are still learning and the rules are always changing. So I still find it really useful to be on those Facebook groups. And usually you'll find that you're buying most of your candle making supplies from a particular website. Um, and if you search for that website on Facebook in the groups section, you will usually find a Facebook group for them comes up in the search bar. And I would just go ahead and join it and introduce yourself and you will find so many people who are willing to give their help and advice and even opinions if you're looking for more opinions on your branding or your photography or whatever it is there are people there who are willing to help which is fantastic and what's great about that is you're getting advice specific to the supplies that you're using whether that's the fragrance oil or the wax or the vessels or the wicks so rather than just using a generic forum or a Facebook group where there's going to be people in there that are using supplies from a whole bunch of different companies, you're getting advice on the actual supplies that you're using, which obviously makes much more sense. Tip number three is all to do with testing. Now, testing is one of the biggest parts of launching a candle business. It's something which is going to take up so much of your time but in the end it will be worth it if you have a candle which burns safely, cleanly and creates a lovely hot throw. One thing that I didn't know about when I first started my candle business was wickless candles. Now I know you're probably thinking, well don't you really need a wick in your candle to be able to test it? And yes of course you do. However, where I went wrong was I thought, okay, I want to try various different wicks in my candles, let's say three or four, because if you didn't know, depending on the makeup of your fragrance oil, um, as well as the vessel that you're using and the circumference of that vessel, you could have numerous different wicks that you'll be looking at using and maybe only one or two of them is actually going to be suitable. So rather than creating four or five different candles with different wicks in them, um, which obviously you will probably find that most of them are not going to work from the get-go, you're going to know from the first or second burn, okay this isn't the right wick for this candle. So instead of doing that you can do it all from one candle jar and follow all the steps you normally would except obviously don't attach a wick to the bottom of your vessel and just pour the wax in and let it set. And then you can come back to it once it's set, after it's cured, 
and simply use a kebab skewer or any type of skewer really to make a hole in the middle of the vessel just like where a wick would normally be. And you can then decide which wick you want to start testing, cut off the metal sustainer at the end and then just pop it in and use a heat gun to smooth the top of it and then you can come back once it's set again and begin testing. And from there, obviously, if you realise that that wick isn't right for it, you can just remove it with a pair of tweezers and just begin testing again with another wick. And you can keep doing that until you find the wick that's right for the candle. And then I would suggest making another candle with that wick, just so that you can see from the very first burn, right down to the last burn, that it is perfect for the candle. So tip number four is to get as much feedback as possible on your candles before you launch. That could be from friends, family, colleagues, neighbours, anyone really who you can get an honest opinion from. There's no such thing as bad feedback. And just remember that everyone's noses are different, um, which sounds really bizarre, but the way that we actually pick up smells can be completely different. There are many fragrances that my husband loves, which I just can't stand and vice versa. So it's important to not just go off your own opinion or one other person's opinion it's much better to gather as many different opinions as possible and that way you're getting a much better idea of whether that is a good fragrance or not or whether it's strong enough or not. And again, there's some people who prefer a more kind of delicate fragrance and then there's people who want a fragrance that's just gonna blow your socks off and fill their whole houses with that one candle fragrance. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of people put a lot of focus into their branding and their marketing and they may lose sight of the fact that the most important thing about your candle is how well it performs. At the end of the day, you can have the most amazing branding and an absolutely beautifully looking candle but if it doesn't perform well and you don't get a good hot throw as well as cold throw then ultimately your customers are not going to come back and repurchase time and time and time again. Tip number five is to include a varied but well considered range of fragrances for your candles. So how many fragrances should you launch with? I would recommend to try and keep your fragrance offering between five and eight. It's okay to have less than that to begin with, obviously, but I would say that eight is a really good number if you can, because there are so many different fragrance types out there. So there's woody, fruity, floral, fresh, masculine, herbal, there are so many. And again, everyone's noses are different. So that is why I would suggest covering your bases with those different kinds of fragrances and having at least one of those which is going to appeal to everyone's particular preferences. And in the same vein though, you're going to want to be conscious of not having too many fragrances which are very similar. For example, if you only have six fragrances that you're launching with, you're not going to want to have a coconut and lime and a coconut and vanilla because chances are people who like coconut candles are going to like both of those candles. So just pick one or the other and not both. So I went back and checked and we only launched our business with five different fragrances. However, because we launched near the end of September, we knew that in October we were obviously going to be launching our winter fragrances as well. So we knew in the back of our minds that we were also going to be adding two Christmas fragrances onto the collection. And we now have nine, not including our winter fragrances. So really I would just say stick with between five and eight fragrances to launch with. There really is no reason to go above 10. You're just gonna be stretching yourself thin when it comes to purchasing fragrance oils and chances are there's going to be at least one or two of those that you're probably going to want to switch out for a different fragrance and you don't want to be left with any excess fragrance oils. That is just a waste of your money. Tip number six is all to do with your branding and marketing. Now, although on the last point I said that your candle's performance is the most important thing and will be the determining factor in whether your customers repurchase or not, I do still think it should be your number one priority when launching your business. However, I would say how you brand and market your candles is so important in attracting customers in the first instance, so that should be your next focus. Especially because the candle market is so saturated, you're really going to have a hard time when you first launch in sticking out from the crowd. Now, of course, the likelihood is that as your business grows and progresses, you are probably going to change your branding slightly, but I would still recommend spending some serious time in the beginning getting your logo, your packaging, your labels, your candle jars, everything to look and feel right so that you're not going to be rebranding your business only a few months after you've started because you're just not 100% happy with it. 
I would say that consistency is definitely key, especially in the first year when you're really trying to get your name out there. And if you're swapping and changing your logo and your branding every other month, then it's just going to be a big hindrance and that's not what you need. Tip number seven is to use social media to connect with your customers and potential customers. Try to be as active on your stories as you are on your feed posts and try and share behind the scenes of your business, whether it's testing a new product or packaging orders, Try to really build a relationship with your followers rather than just pushing out a hard sales pitch at them. So for example, you could ask your followers to help you choose a new fragrance. That's something that we've done in the past and I'd say it's a really great way of helping to build brand engagement and loyalty with your customers. And ultimately it's making them feel valued because they're having a say in what your next step is. Tip number eight is thank you cards. Now again, I would say that especially when you're looking at putting your products out in a market that is so saturated like candles, it's really important to show your appreciation to your customers. After all, they've chosen to buy your candles over a bajillion others out there. Now in the beginning, you might have time to obviously handwrite a thank you card, which is great, but customers will still really appreciate it even if it is a printed thank you card. So we use printed thank you cards. However, we do have a blank space next to the to and from, and then we obviously have and write our customer's name and our name at the bottom. And our customers do seem to really like them. I think it's just a little thing for us to do to show our appreciation. And it's something that I would really like to carry on doing going forward. So tip number nine is feedback. Feedback is so important, especially when you're just getting started. Don't be afraid to ask your customers for their feedback. A great way of getting this is to send out an automated email to your customers after a week or two after they've received their purchase, asking how they've got on and if they wouldn't mind to leave a small review on your website. And another great way to get reviews and to build up a reputation for yourself so that people can kind of go on your Facebook page and see that you're a reputable company basically um, is on your thank you cards to just say, I hope you love your product. We would really appreciate it if you have the time to pop onto our Facebook page and leave us a review. And for us, we've had loads of Facebook reviews that way and a lot of reviews on our website as well, which I think definitely helps people if they're maybe having doubts, you know, obviously we're selling something which the main thing about it is that you can smell it and we're selling it online where people can't smell it, unfortunately. Smell vision is not a thing yet. So, so I'd say the two main ways that we manage to sell so much online is through a really good product description of the scent. So giving the base notes, the top notes, the middle notes, everything. Um, and secondly, reviews. Last but certainly not least, my tip number 10 is influencers. Honestly, from personal experience, I would recommend influencers. However, approach with caution. So I would say there's no harm whatsoever in getting in touch with a few influencers when you're not long started. Influencers who probably have a similar kind of aesthetic or maybe like a home account or something like that that's in line with your branding and the branding of your product and offer to gift them some candles in exchange for a shout out on their stories or their feed posts. It could mean of course that your products are exposed to people who don't know about you yet and you may get some new customers and it's great for obviously brand awareness and at the end of the day you'll probably get some nice pictures that you can use on your own social media as well. However, if you start getting messages from so-called self-proclaimed influencers asking to collab, i.e. them pretty much just asking you to send them products for free in exchange for exposure, don't fall for so this has been a hot topic in the candle world, specifically in the last few months it seems. And this may seem like I'm contradicting the point I just made, but let me explain. So if you have someone reaching out to you and they say, hey, want to collab, etc. Um, as I said, I would just approach it with caution. At the end of the day, if it looks like a very generic kind of copy and paste message, they've not actually said anything specific about your brand and they've probably said something like, I'm obsessed with your brand, yada yada, but they don't actually follow you or they've only followed you seconds before sending you a message, then I would say that's a big red flag. And obviously when you're just getting started or you've just launched and you're getting a lovely message like that, it's easy to just 
get swept up in the moment and be flattered by it all really and lose sight of the fact that these people are probably just contacting as many small businesses as they come across which obviously is really annoying that is probably what it is and if it seems too good to be true then it probably is so I would approach those kind of messages with caution and to be frank I would probably just politely decline and move on because the likelihood of you getting any kind of exposure from it and even a shout out frankly is probably slim to none they're probably just seeing that you're selling something that they have a vague interest in and they're probably just thinking oh I wonder if I can get something for free. That is certainly the impression that I've got from them anyway. We seem to be getting messages several times a day and they're all pretty much the same message that we're getting as well so I thought I would just put that in there that obviously if you're a brand new business and you just start getting these messages you might not be aware that it is basically a scam unfortunately. <laughs> So that is it for today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. As I said at the start, if you've made it this far and you enjoyed it, then please do give it a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any comments, then leave them in the section below. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new and are interested in candle making or small business tips and advice. There will be lots more videos coming your way very soon. Bye guys.